We're live. We're, We're in live. there. We're in there like swimwear. Um, so yeah, I, I just had a lot on my mind recently about no, a few things. No, you don't. You don't have anything on your mind. Well, I'll tell you what. I do. Believe got, it or not, you got I that, do. Like, monkey that's like clapping the things just going on in your mind. No, that's right you. Now. Because you're doing no, that right no, now. No, mine's just a hamster that's just running on the ball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or running around in that, uh, whatever. You do go on. You could go on with some topics, and I, I respect that. So I can. That's why you're part of the show, and that's I why mean, we have a podcast. I also, I also think that I'm like that, just that level of like stupid, where like I don't care enough. Like, the best example for me is the Russell Wilson debate. The Russell I, Wilson debate. I don't debate. care what anyone tells me. I don't care about all of that. I don't like him. I don't care that he's on my team. I don't care that he's playing well. I don't all give right. a flipping. All right. So first of all, if you haven't seen his take on Russell Wilson and you're wondering why he says this stuff, just watch our last pod. Because that was a good pod. Because I, I actually, my face turned red a few times in that pod because you were pissing me off. But well, that was the last pod. Dude, I don't care what anyone says. My reason is valid. I get it. But it's personal reason. Yeah. Anyway, what are we? What are, so, what's, what's the what's the good word this week? So I I want to talk. So first, since you know this is something you could probably harp on a lot, I want to talk about betting football, not all sports, just football, because I don't know if we've really gone into how big it is now. I don't even think we've had a single like pod this entire season where we've talked about like our picks or anything. We might have just said it in passing, but I don't well, think no, we've gone, like because in depth with because it. personally I don't really think of that stuff in advance if i ever do make bets i, do. I know I'm you a, do I'm a, I'm a degenerate i do but like tell me tell me this dude how does betting affect how you watch football right now if anything i think it like more entices me to watch games that i'm not interested in like the best example is this weekend the browns are playing the saints but let's say this let's say you're watching your own team play and you have I, don't, a bet. I don't bet the Steelers. Okay. Well, that's a lie. I bet the Steelers this weekend, but I don't bet the Steelers every week because if I lose money and my team loses, then I'm not going to lie. I, I'm not in a good mood. <laughs> I, no, I get that. The, the thing I have a gripe about betting, like, or the, the gripe I have about betting in general, is that I feel like it makes people look at football differently. Like, we don't take, like, first of all, statistic wise, I'm not a huge guy on stats. I respect stats because I think they do have some meaning towards what's going on and how well someone might be performing. But, bro, when stats become the whole game, I honestly think that has to just do with betting, in my opinion. Because I don't think coaches consider betting or consider stats all in all of things when they're looking into game planning, stuff like this. So I don't know. What do you think? Do you think betting just changes how we look at just the game in terms of stats? I think it does in a bad way. Personally. I think it brings more like fandom to random games and everything. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I definitely think that most people are dumb and put, bet way too many player props. But well, that's what they push in all these. They just push that with all these sports books. They just push props, which I hate. You know, I hate. I honestly hate props. I do them any like touchdown props. I get no anytime touchdowns make sense. That makes but if, sense. But if you're betting like receptions and yards and blah, yeah. When blah, I start doing that's, that, that's when you're like, okay, you then need to take I'm, a step back. Yeah. So I have a problem with that. I just have a problem with the whole integrity of it all. Because I think once it starts, once I got the college stuff, like, first of all, the players are already making money, you know. And it's just like, man, we're betting on these guys who are in college, who are there not only to get into the NFL, but also just because they're in school and stuff, to perform on the field and win normal people bets. Like, that, to me, that integrity-wise, that just seems wrong. I don't know. I just feel like there's something weird about it. Just because it's like a school. Like, anyway, that's just like how I'm starting to look at things. I don't know. I don't think it necessarily affects the professional team. wise. I could get it, but yeah. I don't know. School wise, like, like weird. I don't, I don't know. People like going off of that point, I don't believe that there's any point where people are like, oh, you're going to get 100 yards today. You know? Like, you don't think college. I think so you think the students aren't looking at that. I do I think, think that they, they I mean, they can't not, bro. If you follow ESPN or any of these but mass it, media outlets, they're going to talk about it. It happens more in college than the NFL. Oh, no. I think in their perspective, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the perspective of the player. Like they're like, bro, look at like FanDuel. They have them rushing over sixty something yards today. Like they, there's no way they can't get that out of their mind well, before the same a game because the they're thing checking with the NFL. it, dude. I'm telling, I would check it if you were a professional player. Would you be checking 
like FanDuel and stuff, see what your stats are. Not gonna lie, I would watch my highlights every night if I was a professional player. But I, I would too. I mean, that's like, part of it. I, I don't know. I also feel like you know, you if you do that, there's just so much. Like, there's a lot of room for error there. There is. The NFL is not friendly when it I'm comes talking to that. college though. Even college. As a as a young like kid in early twenties. You're t- you're looking at that stuff. That might get to your head though. Oh, after after a bit, I don't hear enough about that, and I don't think we really hear about college athletes ever talking about that in general. Like whether like they actually pay attention to what their like their line is. Oh, for you see stuff you like see that. a lot of pro athletes talk. Pro about Pro athletes, like, yes, but they're pros. Though. But even then, you also see people talk about like, oh, I don't care if I busted your parlay. I don't give a fuck. I just want to win the game. For I feel like it's just a different in mindset. You know, like I feel like if you were. Uh, Ashton Genty, right? Yeah. I don't think he's sitting there no. going. I don't think he's sitting there going, dude. My over under for he's, yard, for rushing yards is one hundred and three. Well, he's the best. Pl- he's one of the best players in the country, though. I think. Yeah. I think if you're just a I guy, think he's yeah. The, I think he's the running back prospect. I like the guy from Texas too, Cameron Blue. I like him. Okay. But I, I don't know. He could be trash for all I know. I but watch them a little. What bit about here. so now? Besides, like the players' point of view. Just the regular betters. I want to bet, get back to. So when you're, when I'm watching football and I have a bet, I'm more worried about the bet half the time than the actual game play. Oh, of course. And the game. I'm and gonna be honest I, with I you. I hate that, bro. I was, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm gonna be that. honest with you. I don't give a flying fuck about half the teams. I don't either. But you want to? We want to watch good football. Yeah. Like that's the goal when like, you watch. Realistically, you'd like to watch football. a good football game yeah. along with winning bet. Like the best example I give is the. Um, do you remember? I don't remember if it was uh, last Black Friday or whatever it was. It was when the Minnesota Vikings played the Colts, and yeah. they had that historic comeback. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that was last year or the year before. I don't really care. But I had the Vikings money line mm-hmm. that game. Yeah. So when that comeback happens, I'm jumping up and down and blah, blah, blah. And, like, you know, if I don't bet the game, then I'm sitting there like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Cool. No problem. Like, Right. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that's but, probably the n- most casual fans would feel that way if they're doing that, if they're betting on that game yeah. in general. But, man, I just don't know. I Like, we were talking about the Super Bowl before this pod, and I'm thinking, like, man, that's the most bet oh, yeah, sporting event every year. Easily. And no doubt. It's like, man, you just, like, start to wonder – does anyone even care about the game? At I the saw time? this. I you saw know, this it's stat. Like, what's going on here? I saw a stat that what? one of these sports books talk out that say the three biggest years for bet or the three biggest days for betting are number one, the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Number two, the first week of NFL. Oh yeah. And the third, 100%. Wild Card Weekend. True. That's a good one too. I didn't think about Wild Card Weekend. And I was like, That's the fact that too. the fact that there's no other sport here. Nobody bets the World Series. Nobody bets the NBA Finals. Nobody bets UFC the way they bet football. It's also you know it's it's America's sport. You know. Yeah. So I don't even want to begin to even estimate how much money is bet during the Super Bowl, bro. Yeah, I think I saw billions. a stat when it was when it was around, but it's probably a few billion. Yeah, for sure. But but anyway, another thing too I was thinking about is fantasy. So. One of our friends, he's in the fantasy league for the first time, and he, most of the people in his league, auto drafted and are doing better than him. And he tried to. That's that's well, hilarious. Do you, in my opinion, dude, if you are in a fantasy league, no auto draft allowed. That's how I should. That's how I would run a league, because first of all, the auto draft, like, it's you're just kind of it's like why you're even why are you even playing if you don't care about it. That's how I see it. Because if you're auto drafting, you just don't care like about it all. But we like fantasy because we know the players, well, we watch the games, and it just annoys me when people. I just feel like it depends. Auto-draft. If you're not, if you're just auto drafting just to auto draft, yeah. But if you actually have something the day of the draft where you can't sit in front of your computer, well, and that's draft. how you. Well, then you organize it so everyone's available. True. I, I don't know. I don't. I think auto drafting is not bad. I have a problem, dude. With it, dude, honestly. I got I got Jamar chased this week. Motherfucker. Bro, I, my family league, my aunt has Jamar Chase. Now, <laughs> this is a non-PPR league. Yeah. Like, if you score 120 points, you win by 15. She scored 190 points on me. I was like... This week? Uh, this week. This week was slow. I'm like, oh, I'm, the number, I'm the number one seed. If you had Jamar, you won, though. Bro. Like, easily. I had Jamar in my work league, and then I got Jamar in my family league to the point where I'm like... 
I don't even care. I don't even care. I'm down. I'm down fucking eighty points going yeah, into going into Sunday. Attention. I'm like, there's no way I'm catching. I'm like, I need Brock Purdy, Brees Hall, David Montgomery, um, all my players that have the games of their lives to simply catch up. <laughs> I'm like, oh, whatever. But anyway, yeah. I I but in general with betting and stuff, I want it to tone down a little. I know it's never going to tone down. It's no. just gonna go back. You know, keep on going up. But man, I just hope there isn't a day where, like, sports integrity just goes out the window because betting makes more money than anything sports related. Like, well, betting overtakes the profits of just any sport well, company. Here's what I here's the, is true, here's the but. opinion that I've said to our friend when it comes to him. You know, the whole NFL scripted and blah blah blah. <laughs> I the think sports the refs book, are the sports book control everything. No, I don't agree with that. Listen, you have to understand. And I tried to pound this point home to him, but some people don't listen. There is a lot of power when it comes to one simple sentence. If you got a, if you got someone from the um, CIA or any type of high, high government official, if he utters the sentence, we are investigating the NFL for tampering with games. That one sentence is going to make it to where all the people are not going to want to watch it solely because of that. Could you imagine – like, for instance, a great example, baseball. When baseball had the steroid era, you know, the the home run race between whoever the fuck and the other guy. When it came out that it was – that they were under steroids, it completely diluted everything to the point where just now, me saying that guy and the other guy, I don't remember who it was. It was a historic moment where they were chasing whoever the hell's record for home runs. I don't remember who it is. It's not relevant because it's tainted with steroids. It's the same thing if the NFL is rigged. Do I think the refs get it right all the time? Hell no. Well, well, can I – well, let me give you my opinion on the refs. Refs have – refs are human. Yes. So they're going to hate players and coaches – like just like anyone else would bet Scott Foster if he's ever playing against Chris <laughs> Paul, but like it's like I mean that's just life. Like you're gonna these refs are humans, so they're gonna call stuff and be biased at times. Yeah. Do I think the NFL has desired outcomes? Of course. Like Bill Belichick, he said before that they scout refs when he was coaching Patriots because they know their tendencies of calls. Of course, and that should be something that fans need to understand. Is that do when I say that the NFL can be rigged sometimes. I'm not saying that the NFL is screwing like teams over. I'm just saying that the refs are a huge part of the game and they have so much influence that we don't like we got to start understanding that too. Just yes. as much as the players have the influence, the coaches have the influence. The refs have such a big influence. Another example too. You know, the NFL's changing how the game is being played and that's going to you know Go down the list from college to high school. You name it. It's just going to – NFL sets a standard. It's going to keep going down. I hate the kickoff rule. I hate I hate the amount of contact that they aren't allowing when it comes to coverages and being able to hit people, whether that's after a whistle, you know, QB contact, stuff like that. I don't like it. And these refs, they're the only ones that could change the outcome of that stuff. I know they're employers – to the NFL. I know that's their job is to put these standards into place, but dude, they they are li- literally the ones that could save football in terms of this stuff. And I want to see something like that happen, man. I want to see refs go on a strike and and I want refs to set the standard of how the game should be played, not just NFL being a company and setting the standard of how the game should be played. I think they the refs have just as much of an influence on the game. So I don't think the NFL's rigged. I don't. But I just use that term when I say, man, these refs are fucking over everyone sometimes. I, also, I just hate it. Bro. Also, I want to say this for anyone that's listening and for you. It's not just the Chiefs. It is no, not. No, if I know, you watch football, no, I know it's the, not Chiefs, just the Chiefs. It's magnified to a scale of 10 because of what happened in weeks one, two, and three. No, I I've understand seen it with that. Our teams. But you also have to realize. That the call in the Cincinnati game, the Cincinnati yeah. Ravens game, there's a picture that went around social media where there's three penalties in one in one picture. Yeah. And also the Steelers game. Not only 
the TJ Watt get blatantly held multiple times that it wasn't called. Mm. I saw it. I saw it in the midst of the play, and I'm yeah. like, he's being held. And he the, should um, get that call. He has the respect the, in the league to get that call. The game winning, the game winning, the game tying field goal yeah. that uh, the Commanders kicked. Uh-huh. They did. I don't know if it was a. I'm pretty sure they held the the guy coming off the edge or something to that effect. I remember seeing it being like. That should be a penalty. Kick shouldn't be good. There should be five yards back. But do you see what I mean, though? The lack. I, I agree. The, the I'm lack not of saying, consistency. With but you stuff gotta realize too. it's human it, error. Exactly. And but that's you, where it all comes from. Would you rather them circle. call it and be wrong or not call it at all? That's that's what the argument is. You know, that's what every all these refs want to say. Like, would you rather me call it and be blatantly wrong or not call it and be blatantly a call? You know, and it's one of those things where it's like you know, dual edged sword type shit where. Do you want the refs to be throwing flags all the time, or do you want them to let you let them play? If football? they're implementing all these replays, though, now they got that. Che- I agree with, but they also, gotta start checking also the timing often. of it. You know, you can't expect them the timing to, day, yeah. to to you know have New York look at it, then call into the referees to then have them stop the game in the midst it takes for whoever to run up to the line and snap the ball. You well, know, well, let me go back to the play when the Bengals played the Chiefs earlier in the year, and it was the pass interference to win the game. Yes. I am a huge proponent on letting players play when there's a game winning moment. Also, you should be able to challenge calls on the field. Especially the last two minutes yes. of the game. Hundred percent. Agreed. I and yes, it was pass interference that Paul, but to not let players just play their heart out to win a game, whether that means more contact or whatever, is is not allowing the game to just play at its full like to just play the game at your fullest. So when these these are professionals, dude. They're going to play as if their life is on the line for moments like that. And for the Bengals, that was probably the most important game of their season. And you need consistency. If you make that call in that Chiefs-Bengals game, the very next week when you the same sure. exact thing happens but on the uh, but it's switched, yeah, you, you need to make go. that call. Yeah, or you that says to everyone watching, okay, they yeah. want the Chiefs to win. That's how I everyone can tell you thought. this right now. If the yeah. Chiefs drop two games, they're still going to make the playoffs, bro. Yeah. Like, come on. Well, they're kind of only— I I, I do think that the, I do think that the Chargers will give them a run for their money within a, a well, season. Well, that's probably they got the Chargers and they Denver, got the Bills Denver. coming up. Too. Oh, I'm talking about in their division. Oh my bad. I'm talking no. about just their whole the no. rest of their schedule in general. They realistically can I think maybe lose two games. This I year. think they might go undefeated. I mean, realistically, nobody wants to hear this because everyone's just like, "Oh my God, the Chiefs blocked the kick." Bo Nix was, outplayed Patrick Mahomes. Bo Nix played great. Like he's got a Bo Nix and man. Sean Payton. I, I said to my like my dad's a huge Bo Nix guy, and I said to him I was like give him two seasons. I'm like man fuck all that give him a season. Next season I don't think the Chiefs are gonna have to walk through their division like they have for the past five years. I mean, the Denver brought Denver's defense, which you know I think I harped on you last week about this where there was like nothing has changed from their roster. The only thing that changed was them getting rid of Russell Wilson yeah, and bringing in Bo Nix. Yeah, give Sean Payton another draft. The wait till they're off John of the contract. Harbaugh. Wait, wait till they're off Russell's contract, oh God, bro. They're gonna dude. be nice. They're gonna get some good free agents, and that young core that they're just I don't drafting think they're now gonna get is free gonna... agents. Sean Payton's not a big like, oh, let's go sign free agents guy. He's more of like a, I'm gonna sit in my room in a dark corner of the room <laughs> and watch film for 12 hours a day. It's the same thing with John Harbaugh. John yeah. Harbaugh, I will be shocked if John Harbaugh gets any free agent this offseason. That's never how he's been. He says, hey, I've been watching this guy. I'm gonna go. Thank yeah. you. I mean, they both bro, have really distinct styles bro, of play, though. He made Quentin Johnston go from a laughing stock last year. Well, look being who's drafted. throwing on the ball. But still, bro, I mean, last seriously. year, last year he wasn't. You know, he was getting Herbert the looks, out, but he was also just dropping the ball. Yeah. And now it's like he's a completely different player. I'm like, because it's the John Harbaugh effect. Well, when your Harbaugh. when your run game is as good as the Ravens and. You know, the Chargers, the passing game just opens up like crazy. Though. I also think he's a great motivator of men. Like, for instance, it's do you know that he has an offensive and defensive coordinator that both of them play call plays? That's unheard of in the league now. You either have a guy where your head coach is playing. Andy Reid is a what, perfect thing. Can you name Andy Reid's offensive coordinator? I can't. Well, they ha- now it's uh, Matt Nagy, and oh. he doesn't call. <laughs> oh, no, Matt but, Nagy. But, He's more of a QB coach. He's not necessarily the guy. Him and Reed, I know they. Yeah, but, they're like, all right, what do you think about Andy this? But Andy Reed only calls the, the calls the offensive plays. Yeah, because he's the best play Spags, caller in the league. And then Spags plays the thing. I mean, you could say the same thing with Sean Payton and Sean Payton. You could say the same thing with Sean McVay and whoever the fuck his defensive coordinator is. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Well, like, we're talking about the best of the best here. 
you know. Okay, let's so, let's dumb it down. I was about to bring up Kyle Shanahan. But but um, in general, like in general, I I prefer there being a head coach and two play callers. The Steelers. I prefer that because I've seen it work. You need a motivator of men. I've seen you know? it work, dude. Like John Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh, the, Jim, yeah, the, Jim's on the Chargers. The Chargers head coach, the, that one. Everywhere he goes, he changes the culture. Everywhere people, he goes, because he's a he's because a players people coach. People want to follow him. Yes, he's, he's a, a players, players coach. coach. He motivates them, and he just. He's good at bringing the best time. Like he bro, knows what I works. remember sitting in your sitting in your driveway doing whatever when we were when I was either dropping you off or whatever, and we're watching the thing, the watching the draft on your phone, and everyone's like, "Oh, he should pick a receiver. He should pick a receiver. He should pick a receiver." Yeah, I was he like, "He's not. He's not going to pick a receiver." Yeah, I'll yeah. be shocked if he picks a receiver. And they have a great a great tackle now, who's yeah. going to be great for many many years. He'll be. Uh, uh, well, I've said this, and I'm going to say it again. The next. Next season's going to be very interesting in the AFC West. Yeah. Because I don't think they're going to have a walkthrough anymore. Oh, no. This is Chiefs' big time to yeah. get the Super Bowl because it's not going to look the same for them in the future. Oh, Broncos yeah. are going to be good. Chargers definitely going to be good. And Raiders might draft a cube. They might get Shador or something. You never know. But let's since we're talking about that, let's move into – like. so I want to talk about some of the college QBs coming out there's this like year. Two. There's like two. Well, that's – yeah, there's two. And – it's like no one knows how they're comp- going to perform in the league. But I'll say this. If Shador and Cam get on teams that can develop them well, they're going to be good QBs. Because what Shador brings is he brings – he ha- he just genetics. Dude has been around the game forever. Who else was around the game forever? Mahomes. Because he grew up in a locker room. His dad was playing baseball. I mean, when Dion's your son, bro, there's, there's a part – I know for sure Shador has a part of him that's just like – this is in my blood, and I can't let anyone down because this is, like, my life, you know? So that is so big when it comes to football, I think. Just genetics, your mindset. You know, I remember – So that's I remember arguing, I like Shador. I remember arguing with you about you with this when I was like, bro, it's just the, the quality of competition. But then I think it was whatever. I think it was, like, a couple of weeks ago. I was, like, thinking about it. I was like, Josh Allen came out of Wyoming. It doesn't matter. Patrick Mahomes went to Texas Tech. Josh Allen's Josh Allen's different though. No, but like, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is like needed the, the, the better quarterbacks outside of Joe Burrow didn't play in these powerhouse conferences. You know, like I, Bo Nix. Bo Nix went to went to Oregon. He a, yeah, and it was he was okay. He was pretty good, but like he was great. Some of the, some of these quarterbacks that are coming out. Like my biggest thing with Cam and uh, Shador was the quality of competition. Now I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I'm like. It's not even about that anymore. It's just can you do what they need? Yeah. You know? Like it's I think it's all about I if, think you guys I think you guys should get uh I like Shador. Cam. I like Cam or Shador. I, I think want Cam's honestly, better of the two. No, I, I I mean I've been harping it since week one. I like Cam because mm. I think he's a game I think, changer. I think you get you get Cam because I was saying this to somebody. I was like and I argue with this with everyone that's a Jets fan. The Giants are in a better situation right now than the Jets. Everyone's like, why? 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 Oh, that's easy to say. Because why. the Giants have a left tackle, a clear as day number one receiver, and a D line. Mm-hmm. They're not paying anyone. Well, they're paying their stars. Yes, they're paying. They're paying Dexter Lawrence. They're Dex- paying Brian yes. Burns. They're paying Andrew Thomas, their left tackle. Yes. Those are the big contracts. Three. And Daniel Jones is going to be gone. Three. Yeah. You get rid of Daniel Jones. You bring in mm-hmm. a new quarterback. You, for the love of God, keep Brian Dable. The biggest mistake the Giants could make is firing Dan. Let, well, let me tell you my take on it. Because. <sighs> Sorry, I, I keep calling him. Let Dan me tell Dable. you my take on it. Go ahead. Brian Dable, why was he hired? Because of what he did with Josh Allen, right? Mm-hmm. To me, Josh Allen's good with any. Any coach, I'm telling you, he's that good. What I've seen from Dable is Daniel Jones looked good year one with Dable. He wasn't calling the the plays year one. That was that was Kafka. Kafka was the play caller year one for Daniel Jones. Since then, Dable's not been calling good plays. I get Daniel Jones sucks, and uh, I know there's a lot of controversy. He's going third down. He went for you know flea flicker. I actually like that call. I didn't. I did because. There was no explosive plays in Daniel Jones' freaking mind, dude. He doesn't know how to create explosive plays with his arm. So that was like a, all right, we'll give you a, we'll give you an easy one. And he just didn't get, he just didn't throw the ball. But anyway, I, the problem with Dable that I have is that 
in the red zone, his play calling has been atrocious, honestly. Yes, we could go with Daniel Jones, blah, blah, blah. But it's been like that the last two years. And I'm worried that he's going to lose the locker room on top of that if they keep losing. And the Giants don't necessarily have really good leadership right now on their team. They got Dex. They got Burns, who I consider the leaders on the, of the team. Offense, they don't have any leaders. Daniel Jones, he's he's a dude. Malik the, needs a season to become the leader. I don't think Malik's a leader, though. I do. I don't because Malik, he needs to learn how to talk to the media, first of all. He's gone up to the media. And That'll come with time. Yeah, he, with he's, time. he's only 21. I get that. And, you know, Shaq didn't sound incredible talking to the media in his first couple of years. So. <laughs> but Mal- what Malik offers is he's a gamer. He's going to play no matter how he's feeling, no matter what. He wants to be on the field. You know, he had the concussion, whatever. But the dude's a gamer. And that's what you want on the team. But right now, is Dable probably going to stay? Yes. But think of this situation. They draft a QB. Let's say they draft Cam. They don't have a good season at all. You still keep Dable? Yes. For fourth for fifth year? Yes. I mean that's four straight years of bad football. I that's where I'm getting that's where I'm starting to consider. All right, maybe Dable isn't the guy. Here's my rebuttal. Yeah. Dable didn't want Daniel Jones. He inherited Daniel Jones from getting the job. But he also had a say in whether he should stay on the team when they decided to give him the contract and he said yeah. If he was if Dable was like, dude, I cannot win with this guy. He's he's at his peak of development. There's nothing left in him. And again, also I guarantee off, you they wouldn't have signed also him. So coming off a playoff a playoff berth and a playoff win, it's not He looked great in not, that playoff it's win. It's not crazy to assume that also having Saquon Barkley as your number one weapon was Yeah, Saquon big, was it. But dude. also give him the quarterback he wants. Let him develop a quarterback. You don't want the same thing that's happened to the Bears every single thing. I saw a stat the other day, or stat, not like like a history line, where it was like, oh, the Bears uh, the Bears hire this coach. Yeah, and Up, it sucks. They, he inherits this quarterback. Up, yeah. So they fire the head coach. They bring in another head coach. They bring in this new head coach yeah. who inherits this quarterback who they don't like. They get rid of the quarterback. They get rid of the head coach. They bring in a new head coach yeah, and a new it's quarterback. It's, and it's There's like, no consistency. I get that. I get you that. You don't want that because it's the same thing that's happening with Caleb Williams right now. If you fire their coach, which, He's played Matt, bad, which you know, Matt Eberflus is going to be gone after this year. Caleb K- Williams played like shit, though. But also, I don't think it's his problem. If you fire the coach that drafts the person and stuns the development for a year. Think about it. If they fire Eberflus and say they bring in... The let's say Ben Johnson. Yeah, that's what right? I'm thinking. I don't think he'll go to a division rival. But anyway, no, I don't say they so bring either. in Ben Johnson. Yeah. Now that entire year of development you had for Caleb Williams is scrapped. Get rid of mm. everything that he's yeah, learned. You're right, yeah, right. And you got to learn a whole new yeah. offense, a whole new system, <clears throat> and then you just got to learn to be the pro. Like for instance, that's why I think Jaden Daniels is in a great situation. He's got a good head coach. Yeah, he is a good head coach. The offensive coordinator, I think people are going to figure him out because that's always Cliff happens. Kingsbury is a one-year deal type offensive coordinator. Yeah. But he's also good. I mean, he was good at Kyler Murray's rookie year. So. But even if they have him for two seasons and then Jaden can just learn, you need structure, especially when you but have I, a new quarterback. But you and I will both say this. Jaden Williams uh, – Jaden Williams. Jaden Daniels is – he's a special like he's a special player. I let's, I put, let's calm down. We said the same thing about CJ Stroud and he's having a down year. Let's But I do think CJ Stroud's a special player. Remember too. the reason I told he you is. why I bet the Steelers money line this week? I said, "Listen, they're 7 and 1. He's played amazing. He's going to win. He's going to win the These offensive Steelers rookie are a great of the team, year." Man. That's a great but, team. But he's played mediocre defenses this entire time. And the one semi-league good defense that he played he struggled in, but everyone's not going to remember it because of how the game ended. The no, Bears, he's a Bears, rookie too. The he's, Bears game. Yeah, but he's so, he's a rookie too, bro. Yes. Like, like said the Jayden, same thing about CJ Stroud last year, bro. Stroud's great though. I think he's not still lately. great, dude. Stroud to me, Stroud to me is is going to be a great player for a very long time, and that rookie year proved it. To have a sophomore slump is normal. Like that's normal. Exactly, if we're talking, but I'm saying we need to just pull back a little bit. I'm know? down to pull back, but let's, there's, hold, let's wait a little before we get him fitted for the green jacket. I'm just saying though, we're in a new we're in a new age here, bro. Like this is this is you, not. You, you this, should be. You should be. There's scared, no Peyton man. Mannings. There's no. There's no Tom Brady's. 
There's no Aaron Rodgers. No, he's yeah, done. He fucking... there, this is a new. This is a new time period for the NFL, bro. So let's start looking at the great players in our league and start appreciating them. And Jaden Daniels is gonna be one. C.J. Stroud's gonna be one. Lamar's a Hall of Famer. Josh Allen's a Hall of Famer. I mean, these are gonna be the faces of the league, and that's how I see it. You know. And I'm not afraid to say that right now Just already. need one of them to beat Mahomes. That's the only thing beat that's stopping Beat their defense. Them. No, Mahomes. just beat Mahomes. <laughs> like, fuck the defense. Fuck everything. Spagnuolo. Just beat Mahomes. You want to be, you you be like the face of the league? Beat Mahomes. You want to know who did that? Joe Burrow. I love Joe. That's a, why I should have said Joe's, Joe Burrow's name, too. Another guy who is he's not Hall of Fame caliber yet, but... Give him a few more years. He's going to be there, if man. If they could build a fucking team around him, he probably win a couple of season MVP. Ben Johnson's too. going there. I'm with you on that. I know you brought that up last week. I would be I I'm, would be out of my goddamn You'd be afraid, dude. I don't think I don't think they'll I don't think the Bengals like leadership wants to pay a Ben Johnson, you know? Like, bro, they got Zach Taylor. Who the fuck is Zach Taylor? You know? <laughs> I don't know, but he is going to get fired. I mean, bro, they kept on a Marvin Lewis for like an extra 5 years for nothing. The, I think Zach Taylor's going to get fired. Like, let's be honest. They're I getting fired. They, they, and you know the number one reason why? They Sucks. start out the season terrible every freaking year, bro. Every year. So that's Agreed. a problem. You got to get all, got to get time. rid of them. Um, and speaking of that, like, so the Saints, literally, switching. they are in the worst situation of every team in the NFL. But let me let me bring up this. So the head coaching stuff. Why is it that teams? That's fired her head coach. Oh, the betting strategy, my favorite. Forget the even betting, dude. Money. Forget even betting, just in general. Like, well, how come teams jump on or just change their mindset the week following a head coach from fire? I just don't get it. I think there's what a couple things that go on. I think the morale of the team gets a lot better. And I also think the opposing teams don't know what that interim head coach is going to scheme. You know? like Is it really that different, though, from what they're coming from? I don't think it so. Depends if you, it depends on who they promote. You know, like they promoted a special teams coach, the Saints. Yes, but you don't know. You know, like for instance, if if you and I, like, let's say you and I work for the Giants, and we're going in to play Dallas, mm -hmm. and Dallas has all these injuries, and they fire Mike McCarthy, right? That means our entire game plan of the entire week goes out the window because we don't know what to expect from. Whoever the interim head coach is, it could be the special teams guy, the defensive coordinator, the offensive coordinator. You don't know what they're going to do. You don't know how they're practicing. You don't know how anything – all the film you have of the entire year of saying like, okay, we want to make sure that we chip Micah Parsons off the, off the line and then whatever. What happens if the interim head coach goes, hey, Mike uh, Minka, we're going to make it to where – or whatever his name is, Parsons. Hey, Parsons, we're going to make it to where instead of you coming from the left, you're going to come from the right. Yeah, but he does it. I mean, that's just an example. Of I know. What I'm saying. Like, but there's my, different things that they can. My take skip. on it is that players just start to can think that their job might be at stake when a head coach is I fired. Think so I think they're so. More, they're more likely to fire the coach rather than fire the players because if you fire the players, you don't think you pay them all the un all their earned money for the next two years. When a head coach comes in, I mean, the the idea of like <laughs> what they're gonna run now, like what type of scheme they're gonna run, changes. I think when I think that gets the players' minds where it's like, all right, now I gotta prove something because there's new head coach in. I don't know what the future's like on this franchise now. Who knows what next year's gonna look like? I need to play I gotta play like a like a beast here so I get opportunities whether it's on this team or another team in the future. That's how I see it. Cause I think players look at it as okay, like think about this. You're at a job, your manager gets fired, someone new comes in. You gotta look I mean, you gotta like show the new manager that you can do what you you know that you're a good worker. I mean, I see the same thing in the NFL. You know, I just see it as you got to you yeah. all suddenly need to play at a, a better standard because you don't know what the future is looking like. That's how I see it. So, that makes sense. Yeah, and and I just like it for the betting strategy. Yeah, Works betting every wise every time. But but that's a consistent thing that happens, you know. It's right. just when a head coach gets fired, the team starts to perform I've good made, the next game. I made so much money doing that. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, the Falcons were up for a stinker, so I guess technically it, it was, was just, a good It was bet just too. everything pointed towards everything pointed towards a Saints win. I mean, bro, the Saints just fired their head coach. It's They're your, at home too. You're at home yeah. versus a division rival. 
Yeah, rivalry. And four point underdogs. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it, it was a good bet. Um, but yeah, I just think uh, Steelers made me sweat my nuts off, bro. I'm pretty sure I lost four pounds just from sweating. But that was a game. It's like it was a really good game. I can't believe we got game. them the job. I can't believe we got them the job. Commanders might be screwed here because uh, they got the Eagles next. They got, I mean, they got a tough schedule too. I could see them losing a couple games like this. That game for you I guys was sneak. so big because I now see, I mean, your are... schedule's tough. Oh yeah. So it both it's both cases. The NF, but besides, like NFC wise, is really tough this year too. Just stick getting in the playoffs. Have you guys? Have you played the Commanders twice already this year? Yeah, we went on to okay. against them. Okay. They. I'm pretty sure they have to play Dallas twice. Yeah, they got to play Dallas twice. So actually, they should go at least one and one. They they got the. I Eagles. think they can make. I think they can make the make the wild card. To be honest with you, do I think they'll do any damage? Uh, they'll in the make wild the wild card? card. Yeah. No. No, I'm with you on that. I think they make the wild card. I think Eagles win the division. Agreed. Um, the Eagles are getting like I can't explain it, but the Eagles are getting like. I know, obviously, they blew a lead and whatever, but those two rookies that they got on the corners, DeGene and Mitchell, oh, my God, they're good. Yeah, they're good. And Jalen Carter, oh, my. There are multiple points where I'm just like, their defense where, is this, where is this defense all throughout they, the year? Exactly. They haven't played well. Like I don't, They have not been playing I well. I think Jalen, Jalen, I mean, bro, I just don't understand. Why do you go get Saquon Barkley if on the one flipping yard line you're not yeah. going to give him the ball? Well, you like, got bro, two running options at, bro, the, at the one yard line. Hurts has taken like four touchdowns away from Saquon. And I'm just like, what's the point of having? Him? What's I think the point? Jalen Hurts is better at the one than Saquon. I oh, think. I don't care, bro. I want Saquon to just pound that <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, guy's gotten a million and one yards, and the next thing you know, Jalen's like, don't worry, I got this. Yeah, I mean, the Eagles—they're the type of team that you have no idea what they're gonna do. They've been like that since uh, Sirianni's been in there. Oh God, I think that's so a big reason talent. why they so much talent. It's a great team. I I think people are starting to realize now how good the Eagles are because they didn't start out so well. But the playoff push is real. Oh my God, I don't think they're Super Bowl bound, but the playoff push is real. I still have the Lions making the Super Bowl. I think they proved this week that they're just unstoppable. When when your QB throws was it four or five picks? I think five. Your QB throws five picks and you win. That that shows me okay. Your team is legit, legit, legit because like, you don't need a scary QB. good, yeah, scary good. So lions are awesome. I don't remember who I was talking to, but somebody was like, "Oh yeah, who could beat the Chiefs?" I'm like, "The Lions." Oh, I'm 100 percent. And like they could 100%. beat them down. I mean, that's I think all of our dream Super Bowl would be that. I know it's you want Steelers to make Super Bowl. Obviously. I I don't I, I don't think <laughs> we can. I don't think we can. I think you guys. Will I be, think we win a playoff game. It depends what matchup. But, I still think Ravens are a good team. I know their defense sucks. They're just flawed. No, Derrick Henry on, helps a lot. Derrick, Derrick Henry, Henry helps a lot. If they had Derrick Henry last year, they win. win they go to the and Super Bowl. go Super Bowl. Yes, their defense. Bro, if they not don't as have Derrick Henry this year, they lose that first game to Cincy. Yeah, he's a difference maker. Should and he doesn't even he doesn't even need to run for a hundred yards to be a difference maker. He just he he could get a third and two every day of the week. It makes know, me so mad because matter. I've always liked Derrick Henry. Now he's on the Ravens, and now I'm upset. Just shows he's getting paid eight million a year too. Eight million a year for Derrick Henry. He's the tenth highest Come paid on, quarter uh, running back in the it's league. A joke. That's so disrespectful. And he's leading the league in yards and touchdowns. Thank God he didn't go to the Cowboys. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, he wouldn't have the same season he's having right now if he went to the Cowboys. No, that would have been such a waste. I would have loved if he came to the Steelers, but the Steelers don't ever go out for anyone in free agency. We go after like Nick Van Jefferson, like. And then we got Patrick Queen, so. Oh, another and thing we too, got Preston Smith, bro. Although Alex Highsmith is going to be out this week, so. I want to bring up. We were talking about coaches. I want to bring up coaches again. Could this be an off season where we see the most amount of coaches fired ever? <laughs> like seriously, there oh, could God. be like ten coaches well, fired. Okay, uh, the Bears, the Bengals. Yes. Um, the Jags. Jags. Cowboys. He's not Cowboys. fired, but he will leave. Um, no, he's done after this. He's year. done. Raiders. He's done. Raiders. No, the Raiders are stupid, so they'll probably stick with their coach. No. For more Tom Brady's going to be starting taking, making op decisions yeah, for that team. I'm telling you, it's gonna. they draft new QB, he's gone. It's okay. happening. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, okay, so five. Um, I would McVay say. is safe. Uh, whoever's in the Cardinals is safe. Seahawks is safe. Niners are safe. Um 
I think there'll be some some people Everyone that in the are... AFC West is safe, except for the Raiders that we mentioned already. AFC South. Um, Houston, no. Colts, well, Jags, no. Yeah. Jags, yes, we mentioned them. Um, who else? Tennessee. No, mm. they just hired a coach last year. Yeah, probably not. Um, Actually, you're right. So now that we're looking at a big Falcons, picture. no. Bucks, no. Saints, well, they're going to hire a coach because they already fired so that coach. So technically that is one. So, okay, just six. six. Um, who else is in the NFC South? Um, Bucks, no. Falcons, uh, no. Uh, Panthers, no. Panthers, no. Uh, a- AFC West. Bills, no, even though I do think they need to move off of McDermott. AFC but, West. You mean AFC East? I mean East, sorry. Um, McDermott, I think, stays. But Jets, I yes, so that's seven. Jets will hire a coach, so that they've already fired. So yes, seven. Uh, Dolphins, no. Patriots, Dolphins no. Dolphins, don't say Dolphins, no. They just yet. signed him this off season. They just extended him. They're oh, not they did. Extend him to then cut him. Um, this could be a risky one, though. Everyone in the North is staying. Everyone in the AFC North is staying. Yeah. The NFC North, we already mentioned the Bears. Vikings, no. Packers, no. Bears, we already mentioned. Bears, yeah. Lions, fuck no. Lions, they're gonna lock up Dan Campbell league. for the next decade. Yeah, dude's a stud. Um, seven's a lot. Let's just stick with seven. NFC then. East, Cowboys, we already mentioned. Yeah, that's Commanders, no. Giants. Giants I still think Giants think is a so. question mark. I still I don't think, think so. Okay, well, no then. And then who else is left? Eagles. 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 Depending, if what, they lose a playoff game, yeah, then yes. Depending how the playoffs go, maybe. Yeah. So realistically, we're looking at seven, yeah, seven, seven and two have already been fired. That's a lot. I don't remember how, last, how many last year. I don't even know. Man. But seven's a lot. Right. Bill Belichick's going to come back. Ben Johnson's going to be a head coach. But other than that, who knows? I mean, it's going to be interesting. I think Mike Vrabel will get a job. Mike Vrabel, yep. I can see Mike Vrabel. Rob, going I can see Robert Sala getting a job, too, for a team that needs defensive help. Damn, Robert Sala was trash. Or at least a coordinator. Yeah, I coordinator for sure. You know he's on Packers now? As like a consultant I it was or something. The Niners. Nah, yeah, no, nah, he well, was on the Niners before he came. But anyway, I mean, NFL is weird right now. I really do think it's weird. I think there's a lot of conversations about does this year suck? Is the quality bad? Your quarterback sucks. It's because people aren't scoring a million and one points because of too high safety. I Everyone's mean, like, you need to ban too high safety. Why? Because you want the scores to be fucking fifty-seven to three. I uh, yeah I don't know I don't my take it's I don't harder, have that take. It's harder but. for defenses to stop you from scoring points than it is for offenses to score on defenses, especially. How now. I see it different. I see it like if you're a head coach in the NFL, you should be able to scheme around the too high safety and like still succeed. But I the mean, reason why too high safety is effective is because of the fact that it effectively takes yeah, you away can't make both big of explosive plays. Balls. Yeah, because even if you have like Jamar and T Higgins is the best example I give for this. If Jamar beats his guy off the line of scrimmage and goes for a go ball, Joe's not going to throw the ball because of the fact that the time it takes for them for him to throw the ball and the ball to get to him, the safety is going to come over. And it's the same thing with the other side when it comes to T. Higgins. So everything in the middle of the field and out and the outs is going to be open. That's why running backs are having such a great season. Yeah, that's because why they once you run break the, ball the line, like if you bring two. if you bring a blitz and you get rid of those linebackers. The gap between the safeties and your line of scrimmage yeah. is at least 15, yeah, 20 yeah. yards. You make one guy miss, and the next thing you know, you have a 40-yard gain. Yeah. So. No, running back's huge this year. Sorry, guys. I play a lot of college football. I mean, I get what you're saying, yeah. And uh, literally, though, I I don't think two high safeties is a problem, personally. I don't think so, either. I don't. Think I think the NFL needs to realize that if you make all these rules in place where the defender, it's harder for the defender to stop you from scoring – then they're gonna make it to where it's like, okay, I can't touch the guy five yard, five, five, uh, five yards off the line of scrimmage. Okay, we're gonna put a safety back there behind me, for you don't have one on one with the corner with no safety help. I mean, how I see it is NFL wise, it's like you gotta take your best players out of the game if you're talking about defensively. Like, you just gotta take the other team's best players out of the game to give yourself a chance to win. That's, what that's Den- how I see. That's it. how Denver's defense goes. That's they, how they most say, hey, Patrick Sertan, see that guy over there? We're gonna make it to where he's a non-factor. Like, I look at good defenses, and I just see them take out good players consistently. Denver. Like And then Giant, like when I watch my own team, the Giants play, it's, they don't have the talent in the secondary to do that at all. So then it's like my, my yeah, idea about it is secondary. just like... <laughs> all the fuck, talent like, in your secondary went to the Packers. Dude, it's exactly. I love Xavier McKinney. I wish they kept him. Julian Love, two years ago, too, was awesome. He was a, he was a safety as well, free safety. 
Um, but, man, yeah, I just – I think the NFL – I think the playoffs are going to be really good. So right now I'm just like, I, let's get the playoffs. Like, I'm ready to see some real freaking football. That, That's how I feel about basketball. You know, so I, I'm hoping that once we get the playoffs that it's like – some of the best playoffs we've seen in the last few years. Because I think the talent team-wise for the players, I mean, for the teams that are making the playoffs this year, I think the talent is really good. I think these matchups are going to be fantastic, like mm -hmm. if there are the bright matchups. Because there's always been a few stinkers that make the playoff every few years, or every year technically. Also, there's when's the last time we had a team catch lightning in a bottle? It's been a while. You know? Yeah, it's like, been a while, Like, when's the last time man. we had a team make a Cinderella run? Yeah, it's been a long time. I you can't know? think of really one on top of my head. I guess the Bengals. Yeah, the Bengals is probably the last time it happened. But even yeah. then, that was three years ago, bro. And they beat the Chiefs. I mean, that was the key there. They had to yeah. beat the Chiefs. So, technically, if we're looking at Realistically, they weren't a bad team. But they had 10 wins. No, they were I think they were 12-4. and four. Yeah, they were a good team. But I'm just saying, like, if a team beats the Chiefs, most likely it's because they're on a run. In AFC. I want to see fucking... I want to see Josh Allen in a Super Bowl, bro. I want it to be Josh Allen in the Bills. I want to see a lot of players in the Super Bowl. I'm tired of seeing Mahomes. No, you know, exactly. Well, we all are. I feel like it's Brady all over again, I want to see Josh Allen. I want to see Lamar. I want to see... No, no, bro. bro, 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 bro. I want to so, see... Like, if you don't want to see Lamar, want, I want the Bills and the Lions. I think that's perfect. All right. Well, besides your bias, I think Lamar is the best, best quarterback. One of the best quarterbacks we've ever seen. Fuck Lamar. And if taking, that man I'm doesn't make Michael a Super Vick Bowl, all right, calm down. If that man doesn't make a Super Bowl, we are all going to suffer for that because that oh man is God. a game changer with a freaking asterisk on that. Shout out Cam he's that good. Lamar's that good, bro. I love Lamar. I love watching him play. So oh, yeah. I'll be very upset if he doesn't he make a Super Bowl. He played my team. Yeah. Well, he's, he's one in five against my team. Calm down. Although man. now that I'm saying that, he's probably going to fucking win because he's an asshole. Because he's sick. And now he's, he's the best. He's got great offense around him, man. I, I'm looking forward to any Ravens game from here on out. Just because I know it's going to be a it's gonna be a blast of a game. It's going to be high scoring and fun. So, um, well, you better look forward to the Ravens game this week. I am. I'm looking forward to it. Because fucking going to lose. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking forward to it. You're going to have that trash can light him up. It's... I don't know. We'll see. George Pickens is going to do some funny shit at one point in the game, bro. Speaking that was of, so fucking funny. Bro, George Guy, Pickens, Dude man. throws a pick. George goes, all right, come here. And just throws him to the ground. And I'm just like, dude, what are you doing? That fucking... That dude's so talented, He's a menace. Man. He's so dude, talented. I saw a meme around the, the other day that was like, you want to know what goes on on George Pickens' head? NBA Youngboy lyrics and CTE. Yeah, Nothing literally. else. And I'm just like, I mean, it's true. Dude's Guy dropped the people's elbow on his own teammate a couple weeks back. He's so naturally talented, though. He's got crazy hands. He throw anything catch to him. radius is crazy. Yeah, so, at least he has a good QB. That that yeah. fucking that throw or throw that catch he made behind him had completely twisted the other way. Got the ball and oh. Yeah, it's Georgie. He's Georgie. Sick. Yeah, Steelers are them. I'm telling you, Steelers are still my my sleeper team. If I, I had think to pick one, they're such a dark horse. I think they are such a dark horse. No pun intended, because Mike but Tomlin so always wears black Air Forces. Man. But they're so consistent. I mean, going against really good offenses is yeah, like yeah, they struggled a little bit against Commanders, but if we can just keep I mean, up it's gonna with happen. the teams, we're good. Yeah, Our defense is up. good enough to stop good offenses. I agree. You gotta keep up. You gotta keep up. I also think us losing Alex Highsmith for however long it's gonna be is gonna be whatever. But yeah, man. I mean. Yeah. Do we got anything else? Not really. I think All we right. covered our NFL stuff. So. Word. Yeah. All right. It's been real. Stay beautiful, my people. Hope you enjoyed. And uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that, all the, the YouTube shit. Yep. So, uh, yeah. See you later. See you later.